Being no guest to be introduced, it's now time for a member statement. The member from Huron Bruce. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure today to rise in the House to recognize three outstanding leaders in Huron Bruce, and specifically uh, three people associated with the town of Mildmay. Les Leslie Boerkamp, Katie Clark, and Krista Fisher of Sacred Heart Mildmay in the Bruce Gray Catholic District School Board have been recognized by TVO's Teach Ontario Talks. These three educators were recognized for using 3D printing to foster creativity and critical thinking in Sacred Heart students. Leslie Boerkamp explains the process as follows. 3D printing is a process of making three-dimensional solid objects from a digital file. The process can be broken down into four steps. Model, slice, fix up, print. Speaker, I am thankful for the expertise and initiative shown by these educators. For students who understand the initiative and work in a collaborative and creative nature of innovation and entrepreneurship, is, it's so, so invaluable in terms of lessons learned. These are underrated skills in our society today. The school also has 3D printing in terms of a club. Krista Fisher cites the support of the parent community as another integral component in the success of this initiative. I am encouraged by the shared role of parents, students, and educators in fostering a culture of entrepreneurship and creativity at Sacred Heart. Congratulations to the educators and the students at Sacred Heart for transforming their learning. Thank you very much. Thank you. For the member, same as the member from Welland. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I rise today on behalf of Richard Berry, a senior constituent. Richard's daughter, Karen, contacted my office in Welland recently to raise concerns about the repugnant living conditions at the Walnut Manor, a supportive living home owned and operated by the infamous Charlie Duke, an alias. She admitted her father to the home after he suffered a stroke, found himself unable to live alone without care. Like many in Ontario, Richard didn't qualify for long-term care, so his daughter, Car Karen, found him assisted living and signed him up, except it didn't take long for the complaints to start. Everything from substandard sanitary conditions, food shortages, you name it. When the food was there, it barely met nutritional requirements. Concerns were raised with the owner and ignored, and it didn't take the daughter, Karen Long, to realize what we have known for years, Speaker. It's the reason I brought forward Bill 135 last year. These homes remain unregulated. Owners have free reign to take advantage of vulnerable adult tenants who have no other options, no one to advocate for them. We've seen fires, injuries, and most recently, several deaths as a result of no regulation. Today, I urge the government to pass Bill 135, a bill that would regulate supportive living accommodations in Ontario and to make vulnerable seniors and adults across the province receive the protection and the dignity that they deserve. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Ajax Pickering. Thank you, Speaker. I, I want to stand to thank uh, the Honourable Dr. Eric Hoskins, our longtime Minister of Health and Long Term Care, for the great work he has done for Ontario. <clears throat> Health care is vital to all Ontarians, and it's important that we have a minister that listens, and he has. I have brought to the minister's attention a number of health care issues from my writing of Ajax Pickering, and his staff have worked with me and our staff to find resolutions to each and every time. Our Ajax Pickering Hospital is now rightly named Ajax Pickering Hospital as part of a newly formed Lake Ridge Health System, all inclusive for Durham Region. And the 20 mental health beds are returning to Ajax Pickering Hospital with $4.6 million operational funding for the renovation of the unit. The new high-tech beds are also on order. I was also thrilled to be part of the Valley Cliff Lodge long-term care home redevelopment announcement just at Christmas time just passed. The redevelopment will take place with an interruption to as little interruption to residents as possible, and we'll get this, an additional 92 beds, more than double, bringing the total to 192 beds. Uh, Mr. Speaker, health care will be able to move large sectors of existing residents next door to the beautiful new facilities as they are built in stages. Then, colleague MPP Durham Grenville Anderson and I had the honour of officially opening a new 20-bed inpatient geriatric transitional that will meet the mental health needs Thank with you. dementia. The ministry provided some $2.3 million Thank in as fast as I can, Speaker. Bear with me. Uh, the member cannot ignore the speaker. Thank you. Have a seat, please. 
Have a seat, please. That's not appropriate, and it shouldn't happen again. Do your work count. Member from Leeds Grenville. Public libraries are at the heart of communities in rural and small town Ontario. Recently, I met with the staff and board members from the Rideau Lakes Public Library. We discussed uh, that while the role of libraries continues to evolve, the services remain as vital as ever. No longer a place where patrons uh, come only to check out books, libraries in Leeds, Grenville and across Ontario are truly community hubs. In Rideau Lakes, library branches connected more than 7,000 people to the world through the internet last year. It's the same in branches throughout my riding. Dedicated library staff and volunteers foster social inclusion through innovative programs for people of all ages and all backgrounds. Libraries are also becoming key resources for local tourism and economic development efforts. But despite strong support from their municipalities, libraries face tremendous funding challenges after 20 years without an increase to the public library operating grant. In addition, Bill 148 has added thousands of dollars in new costs to already strained budgets putting services and the jobs of part-time staff in jeopardy. Speaker, Bill 148's impact adds new urgency for the government to increase the library operating grant in this year's budget. I can't imagine a future without our libraries in Leeds Grenville, and I'm proud to stand with them today to join their call for a sustainable, predictable base funding they need. Thank you, Speaker. For the members, statements the member from Windsor to come see. Thank you, Speaker. We'll be holding a memorial service in Windsor on Saturday to celebrate the life of Dr. Howard McCurdy. As a child, he was told he couldn't join an all-white scout troop. As a teenager, he was told he couldn't go to the local pool hall in Amherstburg. Those and other rejections sent Howard McCurdy on a lifelong journey. He became an activist for human rights, the founding president of the National Black Coalition of Canada. Howard earned a PhD in microbiology and chemistry from Michigan State. He taught at the University of Windsor. He served as president of the Canadian Association of University Teachers. He's a former chair of the Board of Governors at St. Clair College. As a reporter, I covered Howard McCurdy during his two terms as an alderman in Windsor. He made sure the city's hiring practices were changed, giving visual minorities an equal opportunity for a chance at a city job. He was Canada's second black member of parliament and the first black person elected as a New Democrat. Howard McCurdy was charismatic, sophisticated, and usually the best-dressed man in the room. He was a well-known champion of civil rights in Canada, and during the Mulroney years, he worked hand-in-glove with External Affairs Minister Joe Clark to fight apartheid in South Africa. Because of their efforts, Canada was the only G7 country to issue sanctions against South Africa, when Nelson Mandela was released from prison and visited Canada, he asked to meet with Howard McCurdy to thank him personally. Dr. Howard McCurdy wouldn't tolerate an injustice against anyone. He's raised the bar for us all, and we will celebrate his achievements with Brenda and their extended family on Saturday. Thank you. For the member students, the member from Brampton West. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Our government introduced OHIP Plus for all children and youth 24 years of age or younger, beginning January 1, 2018. This initiative was received. This initiative has received a warm welcome in my riding of Brampton West. Brampton is a fast-growing city and the ninth-largest municipality in Canada. About 32% of the total population of Brampton consists of children and youth under the age of 24. No longer would families have to decide between spending money on food or spending money on medication for their children. This would allow families to spend more adequately on much needed other necessities of life. It is estimated that about 50% of population in Brampton is made up of immigrants. Initially, it's a known fact that immigrants arriving from other countries find it difficult to make ends meet. OHIP Plus would allow such immigrant families to spend, uh, spend on other necessities to uh, establish themselves. Already, already in my riding of Brampton West, OHIP Plus has made a significant impact in the lives of thousands of young people. No doubt, also made a impact, positive impact across all of Ontario. This program is the first of its kind in Canada. It, it would create fairness, an opportunity for the less privileged and people surviving on low income, low wages 
during this period of rapid economic change. I believe that OHIP Plus will be an inspiration for other governments in many other ju jurisdictions all over the world. Thank, Thank you. you. Further member statements, the member from Dufferin Calvary. Thank you, Speaker. In times of crises, we all have different ways of coping. Some of us pray, some of us come together with family and friends to grieve and offer support, and some of us get involved and offer a helping hand. Since we heard the devastating news that three-year-old Caden Young was swept into the Grand River last week, our community has been praying, helping, and supporting Caden's family through this very difficult time. This devastating news makes our heart break. I cannot imagine that Kaden, what Caden's family is going through right now. The community has rallied together with vigils and support, and volunteers and first responders have been working hard searching for Caden. It hasn't been easy. The water along the Grand River is still very high. Ice flows and debris are heavy, and collapsing banks are making the searcher's job that much more challenging. Every day that goes by without finding Caden increases everyone's stress level. Please be careful, and most importantly, keep Caden and his family in our hearts and hearts. Thank you. Further member statements. Further member statements. Member from uh, First Great Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to recognize a successful, enterprising young professional from my riding who was recently named Young Professional Influencer of the Year for her leadership and economic development efforts in Gray County. Savannah Myers, who is 30 years old, won the award at the Economic Developers Council of Ontario Conference in Toronto earlier this month. Savannah previously worked for the Town of Hanover, helping launch an economic development strategy, the award-winning Downtown Revitalization Project, and the popular Launchpad Youth Activity and Technology Centre. Since joining Gray County in 2016 as the Manager of Economic Development, Savannah has taken on multiple economic development projects, such as assisting with the county with being named to the top seven intelligent communities of 2017, alongside Melbourne, Australia, Moscow, Russia, and Edmonton, Alberta, and others, and leading its efforts to develop a regional skills training, trades, and innovation community hub at the former Sydenham School in Owen Sound. This partnership between the county, both school boards, Georgian College, and Owen Sound promised to expand training in trades, from welding and plumbing to software and culinary arts, as well as offer childcare. Mr. Speaker, this is an exciting time for Great County, as it eagerly embraces technology and facilitates new conversations around agriculture and technology, as seen with Great County's Ag 4.0 Digital Agricultural Innovation Conference, which won the Ed Cole Award for Best New Special Event. I congratulate Savannah for her contributions and achievements, and I know I speak for all local businesses and community leaders when I say she is a real role model for young people to follow and for all of us to look forward to working with her to keep supporting prosperity, growth, and promoting Gray County as a great place to invest, work, live, and play. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements. The member from Mississauga Streetsville. Thank you very much, uh, Speaker. Speaker, it's, uh, I think, time to discuss some of Western Mississauga's expectations from the uh, federal budget that will be tabled for the fiscal year 2018-2019. Um, Speaker, in Western Mississauga and throughout the Western GTA, one of the things that we need federal assistance on, and we're hoping that the, uh, the feds will address in this fiscal year, is going to be to work with CP Rail to ensure that uh, CP Rail does a proper deal with Metrolinx so that we can get all-day two-way service. Yeah, yeah. That's one of the things that we need out of the federal budget. The other thing that we need out of the federal budget as Ontarians, Speaker, is uh, something that one of our colleagues, Dr. Eric Hoskins, has just gone there to do. Ontario showed this country the lead in establishing OHIP Plus, which means doing proper coverage for pharmacare for uh, uh, youth between the ages of birth and uh, their 26th birthday. We know that the, most of the uh, money for pharmacare is spent on older people, and that's why we need the federal government involved and participating so that we can harmonize that um, uh, formulary nationwide and so that we can properly cover seniors for pharmacare regardless of where they are in Canada and cover them during the years when they need pharmacare the most. Thank you, Speaker. I hope the feds deliver. Thank you. I thank all members for their statements. It is therefore now time for reports by committees. I beg to inform the